What's going on everybody? Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to look at a more budget friendly simple machine by Artillery called the Hornet. And I do have my eye on a couple other artillery machines and some of you guys have requested them. But I want to start here for a few reasons. One of it which is its polarizing looks. If you were to align a few Ender style machines on a table and you put one of these things on there, you would see this thing from a mile away with its super bright yellow plastics that apparently take inspiration from Lamborghini. So that's really interesting and intriguing. So I definitely want to check it out. One of my main goals with this printer is to figure out if it's a really good candidate for a first machine. Based on its styling, its price tag, and just its sheer simplicity, I do think it would lend itself uh, easier to jumping into 3D printing with. For example, if you were to look at this BQBX, one of my favorite machines, and you can check out the review I did on it right above here, it is loaded, it is jam packed with features. Even if you could afford it at 500 plus dollars, you might not want that to be your first machine or a gift to somebody for their first machine because it's just complicated and there's so many features you have to kind of know what they are to really take advantage of them uh, and for it to not be overwhelming. So that's kind of my goal with this. Is this a good gift printer, for example? This is something you'd gift to a grandkid or your kid uh, to get them started with. Or maybe you're younger and you're looking for a, your first machine. I, I, I have a feeling that a younger me would really, really enjoy the styling of this thing. So what we usually do on this channel is we take out the machines, I show you what's in the box, how it comes, then we go ahead and assemble it and we run it through its paces starting with the STL files that come included pre-sliced on printers on their SD cards. So we're going to go ahead and print a couple things off the SD, then we're going to make a Cura profile and continue with our 3D printed airplane project by 3D Max using 3D Max Extreme PLA. Really excited to continue that project. Uh, we're working on the fuselage now, so we have some big complicated parts to print with this filament. So that's really going to test this thing and see if it's worth your time. But this machine was actually sent to me by Hit. Future Fetter here with a little bit of a correction. This machine was sent to me by a company called TomTop and they actually have a massive sale going on on their store right now on this particular machine. They have it listed for $169. The closest I found is on Amazon for $209. So it's actually quite the good deal. So definitely check out the link in the description below. Okay, enjoy the rest of the video and enjoy these products by Hicktop. Thank you. See ya by Hicktop and that brand might sound familiar because if you have an Ender or a Vox Lab machine and you guys have ever looked into replacement parts or accessories these guys have a ton of it on uh, Amazon on their website on places like Banggood or AliExpress they're all over the place and they've actually sent uh, two more accessories here this is a Hicktop build surface and this one is a PEI spring sheet and it actually comes with two sides a smooth side and a textured side so that's really nice to have from one uh, spring sheet and this is a Z a dual Z upgrade kit for an Ender or a Vox Lab machine so if you guys are interested in these things they've actually included a 7% off coupon just for us just for this channel so please check out the links down in the description below and I'll include the 7% uh, uh, off coupon. I also have uh, the Yusu uh, dual uh, color uh, filament here that's a matte uh, finish and it has two colors and depending on what side you look at it changes. Really fun just like this machine. So hopefully if we combine those two together we're gonna have ourselves a good time. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right let's get unboxing this thing. I got my blade All right, let's see, we got a little pouch over here. What we got in the pouch? All right, we have a eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter wrench. We have some spare wheels, a nozzle, looks like an end stop, some zip ties, and a full SD to USB reader. Let's see, USB on one end. Yeah, full size SD on the other. And we have our full-size SD card. Oh, it's an adapter. Okay, so it's a micro, US, micro SD 4 gigabyte card with an adapter. 
Okay. We have some little tools here. This little heat shrink. Oh, okay, so we have a tiny little piece of PTFE tubing, but it's black. And some small uh, screws here. Don't know what they're for, but we'll figure it out. And then we have a cable. This will allow you to hook the printer up to your computer. Put it all back into this bag for now. All right, we got the paperwork. Let's see here. What I like to see on the back here is how to set up Cura. Always very useful. I'll keep this off to the side. Our spool holder. It's actually quite solid. A lot more solid than I would have expected it. This is the quirky cable of the machine where it's not only the PTFE tube to the extruder, but it is also how the power is hand, uh, handed over from the machine itself to the hot end. Interesting, quirky, could cause problems, uh, but makes it very, very clean. We have some, uh, it looks like some of the machine is actually zip tied downward. Might have to set this whole thing down on the ground and pull it up. We have a power cable. All right, here we see our first flash of yellow. This is our hot end. Wow, okay, so dual fans on both sides. Looks like it's definitely been tested. There's some dust on the fans, so that's probably a good thing. This is how the plug works. This cable pretty much just uh, gets installed this way into the machine. Like I said, very interesting system. Little sister board with all the connections. They're kept nice and clean and really short. Large heat sink. And looks like we have an MK8 style nozzle. Looks good. All right, here we have the gantry. Looks like it's a single sided Z. Looks like the stepper motors are all branded. So at least they're not generic. That's pretty nice. We have a pretty interesting coupler here. Looks like it's floating, which is actually really nice. I always did like this idea of uh, how to mount this coupler. Here we have our extruder. It does remind me of a Titan extruder, but it's it's uh, branded here. And it does have that um, very interesting uh, plug that transfers the power to the hot end. Nice and clean. Set it down for now. All right, and I believe the rest is just the machine. So I'm gonna take this box down and get the machine up here. Wow, that is yellow, that's for sure. Do not remove before finish assembly. Okay, the cables look nice and tidy. The bed cables attached really nicely. Looks like we have an insulated uh, bed. The wheels are nice and smooth. There's a tiny bit of wobble, which we will fix with the included tools. Let's just take a peek around the machine shall we so here we have our power supply nice and tidy underneath uh, here we can see our uh, rocker right over here and it is set to 115 volts where it needs to be we have a very very small display but it's not a touch screen or a color display or anything like that it is a basic display which shouldn't really be a problem for something like this here we have some uh, rubber feet they're non-adjustable looks like some of the hardware is already in place and it looks like I am missing one screw, so I'll have to go through the box and see if I can find that bolt. All right, we have a fan on the back. The plug is also on the back. Looks like the, the frame itself is very generally similar to an Ender, but then it also has this really nicely molded plastic that's also attached, so this feels very robust. So that's definitely nice. I kind of want to peek what's in there. It looks like there's a nice opening here on the bottom, and I do see some heat sinks and the uh, steppers, uh, stepper drivers do look removable. So you know what, while we have this thing out like this, let's take this cover off. Looks like there's only a few screws to get, to get it off. And let's take a look to see what's under there. Okay, so it's also held on with clips. Okay, very nice plastic on here for sure. Very professionally made. It's not flimsy, it is actually quite thick. It's decent. All right, so let's see if we can see some branding on the power supply. I'm not sure what that logo is, ZL360. We have an ARM chip, 
things are glued down. But they are uh, removable steppers and stepper drivers, and it does look like there's an extra one right over there for a Z2. So that's nice. Looks like the printer will be expandable. I'm assuming uh, you will be able to use Ender style parts for this, but I'm also assuming that uh, artillery has their own upgrades for this specific machine. Uh, interesting how um, this cable runs over here. Nice quality plug for the USB. It's kind of like an extension cable. Looks like we have an UR port, UART port available right over here. That's useful. Uh, also an LED port and something labeled reset. On the bottom there, I do see some kind of uh, 3D printed part and that's, it looks like that's how all of the power uh, or all the cable uh, management is held. And look at that, we have, we have crimped connectors. Very nice. No soldering, no solder joints here. Props, artillery, good job. Everything else is hot glued down so nothing can get loose. They know this is going to be a beginner style machine and they don't want any of this stuff coming loose and causing problems. So that is very nice. Uh, the board is labeled Artillery Ruby version 1.1. So far so good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. There's a fan uh, with a cover on it right over here that blows directly onto the fans. And the, on the opposite side, there is a vent and on the top, there is a vent. Everything under here looks great. There's a grommet uh, to pass all the cables. Everything looks good. I really like the construction of this and the way this is put together for sure. Let me go ahead and throw this cover on. All right, uh, let's put this thing together. It looks like putting it together is going to be an absolute breeze. Uh, this gantry is just going to go uh, right on top, just like this with two bolts on each side. And I need to look for one more bolt uh, in the box because I am missing one at the moment. So let me go ahead and find that bolt, look for it, and let's put this thing together. It should literally take 10 minutes. Aha, it was just loose in the box. No big deal, it looks like we have it. Okay, let's install it. All right, let's take a look at the menus. Now, like I said, the screen is pretty small. You can see the size of an SD card here. It's not that much larger, but you know what? This thing is an absolute classic and I actually kind of missed this menu. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's in here. We have our pretty simple uh, motion controls. Let's go ahead and go in, move axis, auto home. It's actually really quiet, uh, much more quiet than I, than I thought actually, the fans. Uh, the motion, everything seems pretty good. We have our bed leveling procedure, which is pretty nice that at least that's included in here. I'm gonna assume, and we'll test this later, but that it's gonna go to our four corners and allow us to really easily adjust our bed. We can disable steppers. Let's go back to main. Uh, let's see what's in temperature. We have nozzle bed, you know, the basics. Uh, and you're not gonna be heating it uh, pretty hot anyway. The hot end is limited to 240 degrees. This is mostly going to be a PLA, TPU, and a PETG machine. And we'll be testing some of that today. All right, let's go to configuration. And in here, and actually the, one of the most important things I want to see should be in advanced settings. And that is, okay, all this is pretty basic. There it is, steps. Uh, this is what I wanted. Uh, one of the only things that, that's really important uh, to have in here so you can tune your machine is having steps. And that is here and easily uh, available to us. You can tune your temperatures, the things you can preset to. Uh, very nice. So far, you know, the basics, but the important stuff is there. We have a change filament option. Nice that that's available. That'll make loading and unloading filament really easy. Change media. So I guess that just ejects this. 
and then print for media. Let's see what we have on the SD card. Uh, cube and Hornet config. So just the cube on here is the only G-code? Okay, that's a bit unusual. Usually there's at least two or three test models, but the cube is all we technically need to test if the machine is working. So that's what we'll do after a bed leveling. Man, absolute classic. You know, the menu is okay, fast and easy. I wish uh, that the uh, scroll wheel here was a little bit more sensitive. I'm finding that if I scroll really slowly, uh, it takes a lot of clicks out of it to actually move. That's just something you have to get used to. Not a big deal. Uh, when you go fast, it does do exactly what you want. And I know that's also a setting in Marlin. Okay, and we have a little reset button here. Uh, let's see if it will just reset the whole machine. Yep, it just resets the entire machine. In case you need to stop something, something's going wrong, you have a nice, easy external button here. So, so far, so good. Let's go ahead and do a bed leveling and let's test with our cube. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and go to temperature and we are going to heat the nozzle to 200. Okay, and we're gonna do the bed to 65. All right, so we will let that heat up. I'm not gonna put any film into the, into the machine because we don't want it to uh, mess with our leveling process. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a piece of paper while this heats up. All right, we're up to temperature, so let's go ahead and go to motion. We're gonna go to bed leveling. And okay, so our our, our Z is at zero, so that's good. Level corners, that's kind of interesting. So there's level bed and level corners. Well, let's do level bed first, it's at the top. It looks like it's homing. Nice and fast and easy, click to begin. All right, so it looks like we're going to level with nine points. Oh, I see, actually this is doing a bed mesh leveling and I technically don't want that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this really quickly. I'm just going to click through and I'm going to go back to the corners. That, that's actually a, a great feature to include in a machine like this. Manual mesh leveling is really, really great. It's, it takes an extra second because you have to do it manually, but it definitely is as good as having an auto bed leveler, in my personal opinion, especially for small, simple machines like this. So let's go back to motion. Uh, let's go to bed leveling. And then we're gonna go back to level corners. That's the one that we need. So yep, here's our first point. Looks like we have some work to do on our middle point here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Looks like it's letting us do it multiple times, which is definitely great. I'm gonna do it visually this time. All right, so I basically kept going around and around until all the points look good to me. And right now they do, and I love the fact that I can continuously go around like this. It makes it really, really easy, and the movement speed is very fast, so definitely very nice. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit done at this point. And now we're gonna go back to uh, le uh, level bed. And here, it's going to give us nine points. It's going to stop at each one. And we're going to make sure that we create our mesh just by clicking through the screen. So it says click to begin. Next point is one out of nine. All right, so let's make our mesh. And we are now not touching uh, the wheels here. We are actually using the scroll wheel uh, to make sure that we have a perfectly level bed. So this looks like a little bit too close. So I'm gonna move it up some and it moves as you scroll. So let's get our paper in here. I'm gonna click through here and make sure these are perfect. Perfect, leveling done. So easy to do. I love Marlin's uh, manual bed mesh leveling and I've definitely enabled it on some of my machines that I've put together myself that don't have a leveling sensor on them. And I preferred it that way for many, many years. So our bed should be leveled. Everything is nice and hot. Let's go ahead and load some filament and print that cube.
All right, so the Artillery Hornet. Thanks again to TomTop for sending us the machine for, to check out. And uh, it's been a pretty interesting five days. I haven't used it for months, so I can't give a full review. So just keep that in mind that this is about five days of nonstop work. And I've printed some massive things on it. Like these are not uh, small and easy prints. These are really hard, complicated prints with lots of retractions, single walls on the outside, which can cause all kinds of issues. And the first one was actually um, not the best print. Definitely, it was actually over extruding. And that's because I used the Aquila uh, profiles that I have from the Vox Lab machines uh, for this. And in them, they use a 105% flow. Once I reduced it to 102, these things became super crisp, great prints, shiny exterior, still plenty strong for what this needs to be. And I mean, these are definitely complicated prints and the machine prints fast. So that's the general overview uh, from the experiences. It's a positive one. Um, I just wanna say that I, I wanna see more. I wanna see more of this type of thing. I really like the package. You know, they said that the uh, the styling is from Lambo. I kinda wish there was there was a SVT version of this machine where it's flat black, but has it gives you more. PI spreadsheet, dual uh, Z, um, auto bed leveling, a touch screen, things of that nature. Kind of like a special version of this machine I think could be really cool. For those that are instantly turned off by the bright yellow, I can see why that would be. This thing has some angular designs and you know these gills, and it's definitely design first. Um, because once you strip it all down, it's just a, somewhat a standard machine with some special quirks that I'll go over a little bit later. But I think the, the main part about it is it has this striking styling to it. And I, and I kind of like it, honestly. I, I'm a big fan of cars. And this does remind me of this aggressive earlier uh, Lamborghini styling, like kind of like the Countach when they had these angular you know, um, lines and spoilers that didn't belong in places where they should be. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, I think I kind of like it. I kind of wish they went even further with it. Maybe some LEDs. I think that would uh, that would be really cool. That's what I'm kind of getting at with the SVT version. But just like I do with some other machines, let's go over some pros and cons that I found in the time of printing. And then we'll kind of go over a little bit more and get into some of the details about the, the way that the machine works. Because there's some really interesting things. I think some of its strengths uh, and also some of its biggest weaknesses are the little quirks that come with this machine that's almost like design first, if that makes any sense. But let's go over and I just have a list. There's no particular order. I'm just going to go down it. Uh, let's start with the negative stuff. Let's just get that out of the way. So the first kind of strange thing is in the menu, when you go to bed leveling, the bed leveling is off. So even after you set the, the mesh and after you level everything uh, mechanically, since it is a mechanical machine, it still has leveling off in the menu, which is kind of strange. You can, you can turn it on. I'm assuming that uh, actually turns on the mesh leveling. Uh, on the machine. So that's kind of strange to see that it's off by default, or even if it can be turned on and off, it's hard to tell. And maybe that shouldn't even be in there, you know? So that's, that's number one. That's kind of strange. Speaking of things that are strange in the menu on my particular machine, baby stepping the Z and also the Z offset for some reason just does not work. They don't, they don't do anything. Um, so you end up just mechanically adjusting uh, the first layer, uh, but then it's perfect. I, I leveled this thing one time and I haven't touched it. But just as a note, on my particular machine, the uh, off Z offset uh, in the menu and the baby stepping did not do anything. Not that big of a deal on a mechanical machine like this, and maybe it's in there if you add a sensor. Once again, kind of unclear. Uh, but that's just something that happened on my particular machine. Uh, one of the other things that's that's kind of strange, I guess, like I said, there's some quirks here that, that, that are interesting, is the bed is glued. It's obviously not permanently glued. You can get this up if you wanted, but it's glued instead of using clamps. And I understand why. This machine pays a lot of attention to aesthetics, and those clamps are definitely unsightly. There's some better than others, but yeah, without any clamps, it does look better. And actually on my custom machine uh, that you typically have off to the right over here, I did the same thing. I used double-sided tape, really thin stuff. I made an X on, uh, on the aluminum and I put my uh, 
a bed right on top of that and it's been like that for years and that's how I've used it and they're doing the same thing so it depends what your interests are and who you are and how you use your machine uh, you might think of that as a positive or a negative in my case I think it's kind of interesting I've uh, had prints stick a little bit too much and I always liked being able to remove the plate to cool it down or sometimes to take it to my fridge or a uh, freezer even just to get the print off real nicely without breaking anything or scraping it so I do like removing uh, the bed, but it's on there. You don't have to worry about clips. It's not, you know, it's easier for them to ship. So I understand why it's there, but worth mentioning. Uh, let's keep going down with the negatives. Okay, so the encoder, the knob that you kind of control the printer with, you move through the menus, isn't very accurate. I'm kind of used to all of my other encoders, at least that I've used so far, to have one click means one move. This one takes about four clicks to move once and it makes it feel slower than it is the it's a 32-bit board the board in here is actually great as far as hardware goes so it's definitely not that it's just the setting in cura i mean not in cura excuse me the setting in marlin that they set up from the stock uh you know the stock factory settings uh have it go too much there's too much uh, clicking uh to move once um, I just wish it would have been a little more precise uh, with the encoder. And the only other thing I see on here that has uh, a negative connotation to it is that it has a small and outdated screen. Honestly, the screen doesn't need to be bigger. There's barely anything that you're going to be doing in here anyway once it's all set up and going. So just keep that in mind. That's not really a major negative. But printers are coming with large screens, beautiful screens, easy to use touch screens. Um, and they're just more pleasant than, at least in my personal uh, uh, opinion, than something like this, where it's, it just feels outdated. You know, in a machine that looks this advanced with all the design bits on here, I just wish it was a nice little touch screen. You know, I think it just would have been a little bit more pleasant to use and inviting. But not bad. Uh, you know, I do think it kind of limits you and hones the machine into what it is um, so it doesn't give you the opportunity to get confused nearly as much as some of the menus with touch screens that are customized and keep going deeper and deeper and deeper um, so there is something to that but worth mentioning kind of wish it had a different screen so that's the negatives that i dug up you know uh, just trying to use it uh, uh, in all this time if you look up at this machine you will see people talking about the PTFE tube that runs through this really interesting quirky power delivery that they made on this machine. But on mine, I could actually pull that PTFE tube out of there. Uh, and I saw some videos online um, where people have been replacing those. So that's not a problem. Um, it is longer than it can be, but the fact that it's this clean and easy and removable I think that's okay. Uh, retraction hasn't really been an issue. Um, this has a ton of retractions and it was printing really fast and it's fine. Uh, I did have to reduce it from its stock, I think it was five-ish to about four. Uh, I think I've even tried three on one of these and it looks super clean. So just some retraction settings, some flow settings, and this thing is printing really clean. Um, as far as like bridging is concerned, it has two fans on both sides, which is really nice. Um, you know, this, um, this infinity cube after playing with it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, uh, this thing is just perfect. It came off literally flawless. There isn't a single issue with this thing. And, uh, as you can see, it had no problem with print in place. So I haven't printed in a TPU, but that's a question for you guys. How, how much further would you like me to test this machine? Are you interested in it further? Let me do, know down in the comments below if you guys want to see other materials. Now, the hot end doesn't go higher than 240, so this isn't a machine that you're printing much of anything outside of uh, PLA, and I do think, honestly, for what this is, that that's okay. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I kind of want to see if this is a good machine uh, for people looking to gift it or to buy it for uh, a first machine and uh, honestly so far yeah i think this is definitely a candidate for that i do wish it was a little bit cheaper even ten dollars less at 190 i think would be great 180 definitely would be an awesome uh, deal for something like this especially because it has really convenient things for a mechanical machine like yellow stiff springs under the bed and the insulated bed all those things are great uh typically um 
you know, lower end machines uh, don't come with that type of thing. Uh, so let's keep going down my list. Uh, what else do I have? Let's start looking at the more positive things. So setting up the printer in Cura was easy. The manual gives you exact instructions of what to put in to set up the machine. And then on the SD card, when you throw this thing on your PC, uh, it gives you uh, three different uh, Cura profiles. It gives you a, I think it's like fast, uh, I don't remember exactly what they are, I wanna lie, but there's these three profiles that are on there and they were uh, pre predetermined. You can just slice files, that's what I used for these. I think I used normal for this and it came out literally perfectly. So that's what I would use to start. And like I mentioned a little earlier, um, my Aquila profiles for PLA worked perfectly on this machine without any kind of modification. So that's nice to know. Uh, ferals. It had ferrules on uh, ferrules, ferrules. It had them on all the electronics uh, that that require power on the um, on the board, as you guys saw earlier. That's great. Majority of the printers that I open up don't have this, so it's fantastic that that exists. It just makes it safer, as most of you guys already know about that. It prints really fast. Some of the stock profiles go to 80 uh, millimeters per, per second. I know nowadays there's really fast machines, Quarks, Y machines, but for one of these type of entry level Cartesians, that's fantastic. That's plenty of speed uh, for your everyday prints. And I would suggest sticking at around 60 uh, millimeters. That would just get you nice and crisp, uh, clean prints, literally near flawless prints out of this at that speed. Uh, removable repairable stepper drivers. I think that's great that this has such a powerful 32 bit board with removable stepper drivers, just makes upgrades, um, maintenance, and just you know, having having the knowledge and knowing that one of your steppers, uh, stepper drivers could go uh, uh, up in smoke and then you could just drop in a new one for a few bucks instead of replacing your whole motherboard. So that's definitely a major, major benefit. Um, let's see let's see let's see what else we got and i think that's actually that's all i have i have yellow stiff springs on the bed that was easy to uh hold level yeah um i've printed all of these large items you guys saw me scrape them up with a razor blade to get them off the bed a little bit faster um yeah no leveling issues whatsoever everything leveled the first time so let's talk about some more of the quirks um so something that's interesting, it has a single sided Z, but the motor is on top for some reason. It's basically inverted. I'm not sure why they would have put the weight up top and I'm not sure it actually matters in this particular configuration, but it's worth noting that it is an abnormal uh, setup in that sense. Uh, I do like the extruder, it has been really good. The exposed gear on the extruder actually makes it really easy to feed a little filament or when you when uh, the machine is all um, hot, it's easy to extrude that extra bit of filament uh, or if you change the color, uh, that's just nice and easy to use. The lever is easy to grab, it has tension, adjust. Uh, all the plastics on the machine are really high quality. I don't know if they're ABS or what materials they're using on the plastics, but they're all really sturdy, not creaky. Uh, they're not sharp or anything like that. They have a really nice finish. So if you're working around the machine, you know, it's always nice to feel like you have a quality machine. And this definitely gives you that feeling, especially with the hot end. The hot end uh, looks and feels really nice. I just love that simple, um, you know, assembly uh, with the dual fans. Everything has little sister boards, which is really nice because if uh, you have to replace something or reduce some kind of wiring or you're upgrading something like adding a, a sensor or changing something, it's just easy to uh, wire you know, from somewhere over here to a sister board instead of wa running a wire all the way down the machine, undoing all the sheaths that cover it, uh, things of that nature. So those are always welcome. And there is some upgradability on this machine, although I haven't really honestly looked much deeper into upgrades because so far everything that I've thrown at this thing, it has done, um, you know, it has belt tensioners built in, I like the way that they're actually routed. I think most uh, machines have the belts in the extrusions, both on the Y and the X, but these kind of sit underneath. And that means that none uh, of the belts are actually rubbing uh, the corners, the sharp corners uh, of the extrusion, which happens on a lot of machines. Um, specifically more closer to Ender uh, 3 clones. This isn't a direct clone, there's a lot of unique uh, stuff on this machine 
particularly. Um, so yeah, I, I think that some of its quirks are just that, they're quirks, but there's, you know, the styling of the machine with this uh, adjustable distance uh, built-in um, spool holder, for example, it just, it looks nice. It's just nice. I think, uh, like I mentioned, I want to see if artillery, you're paying attention. How about an SVT version of this? You guys said you're uh, doing, uh, doing, you know, borrowing some of this stuff from Lamborghini. Let's see a special edition. I want to see underglow. I want to see a, a, a flat black edition. Let's go wilder. Let's put more Let's make a. Let's just make a, a better machine with the same idea. I honestly, I honestly dig it. It's kind of cool. All right, guys, you let me know in the comments down below what you guys want to see with this machine. Are you interested in it? Is there something you don't like? Maybe you don't agree with me. Let me know down below. Let's start a conversation. And if you guys want to have a further conversation, check out the Discord to this channel. We are just under 1,000 members in that Discord. And definitely take a look at the giveaway section in the Discord uh, and uh, keep an eye on that. I have some changes to make in it, uh, which I will do very shortly. But I will definitely have a really fun giveaway uh, really shortly on the channel that I'm uh, excited about. Also, thank you to my Patreon members. Uh, you guys help out the channel directly, and it's huge. And uh, thank you, uh, thank each and every one of you. Uh, the Patreon Plus members are always displayed at the very end of each video, uh, and you guys always uh, get to see every single video early, at least a few days uh, if I can get it um, out as soon as I can it goes there first you guys can ask me questions directly etc etc uh, thank you everyone in the comments thank you everyone in the discord helping everyone else I think that's all for me today all right as always I'll see you all in the comments later <laughs>